Okay guys, so today we're going to be doing another very interesting video and it's primarily going to be rolling footage from actually like really getting out there and doing it. But today we're going to be talking about how I recommend and how to safely overall cross a river. Now, I understand that everyone has a little bit of different ideas for how to safely pass a river and it also goes back to different types of rivers but this is going to be on the Tanana River. So in this video, I'm gonna be crossing up to waist high water and the current's pretty strong. So the first thing to do uh, when crossing a river is this is kind of the first step and it has to remain throughout your entire kind of crossing your river journey. And that first part is your mental fortitude and overall the hope you have in crossing the river. I think that this is the first and most important part because you'll hit that point, especially if the river's very strong and if the river's very deep. And like I said, this river went up to about here, you know, about up to my hips, and I stand over six foot tall. So we're talking about half my body was submerged in the water. And so, plus having a very strong current, a current that legitimately, every time you pick up your foot, you actually have to force your foot from swaying because this uh, river had so much current that it was trying to actively shift your body. Uh, you need to keep in mind what you're fighting for, what your reason for crossing is, and overall not to get hopeless. I think uh, a large portion of survival that's overlooked is hope and that becomes even more apparent or at least personally with myself it became even more apparent when I was crossing a river. So that's the first step. The next step that I recommend, and you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I throw rocks in the river to measure the depth, and if it makes a splush sound, it's all good to hit the bottom. Well, not every river crossing has that ability. I can tell you where I crossed the river. There were rocks for sure, but there weren't a high amount of rocks. So in cases like that, and obviously the water was very silty, so you could not see the bottom. So the next and most important thing to do is make a stick. And as I'm showing in the video, I just grabbed a quick and, you know, about thumb thick piece of stick and I just chopped it off the tree, chopped it up into what I needed. It was down, it was dirty. I, I wanted to show that you didn't have to spend a lot of time making the stick. The stick wasn't what was really important, but you want to make it about as tall as your body or about that, you know, maybe a and a foot shorter than yourself but you want to make it pretty tall and like I said about as tall as yourself if not as tall as yourself now this stick is going to be very important and I also want to note that you want to sharpen the end the end that you'll be driving into the into the water so the, the reason why you want a stick is one that the key principle of crossing rivers is that you want to make sure especially if you're bearing a load you want to make sure that you have two points of contact with the bottom of the river at all times. So what that means is obviously when you step, when you take each step, you have to pick one foot up and move it. So what you need to do is have a stick there and you drive it into the ground. Make sure it's firmly cemented into the ground so that it's not going to shift. The reason why I like to make mine a little bit pointed is because generally the under, what's underneath the river is rocks, kind of like gravel. So if you make a pointed stick, it will drive in between those rocks and get down into harder ground. So you can drive it down, make sure it's stable, and then move a foot, then maybe move another foot, pick up the stick, drive it into the ground, and that was the type of manner I was using the stick for. But at all points uh, during the time, especially because the current was so um, hard, I needed to make sure that at all times I had at least two points of contact. So the next thing you want to do, and this was one that I kind of learned, I watched a few videos too to see what they had. This was another tip that I found out and is really good. And it was also something I was practicing in the video is I had my backpack on, but make sure if you have any waist or sternum straps on your backpack, make sure that you undo those uh, waist and sternum straps because should you, in the event that you do collapse, you wanna make sure that you can get out of your backpack and that it's not attached to your body because your backpack can be a very large weight that can actually help drown you instead of helping you swim or help you get back up. So make sure in the event that if you are wearing a backpack, it make sure that you, it has no straps strapped to you. So. 
The next point is depth. And once again, we have the stick for another reason, and that is that not only does it help give you that two points of contact, it also helps measure your depth. Uh, because, like I said, we don't always have the convenience of rocks and, you know, convenient things to plumb the depths. It's really important that you have a stick to measure the depth of where you're walking. Also, another reason why I like having sticks is, unlike rocks, a lot of these rivers here in Alaska especially, and I'm sure it's the same way in other states, there's a lot of underwater debris. So there's a lot of underwater debris that you have to watch out for, and having a stick to help probe for underwater underwater debris is really important. So those are the basics to crossing a river, and overall, once again, going into a river, the biggest thing you do have to keep in mind is the hope and the reason why you're crossing the river. And another thing is, river heights do fluctuate very wildly, not just here in Alaska, but really everywhere there's rivers. So do keep in mind that just because a part of a river is unpassable today does not necessarily hold true tomorrow. Also, though, on the flip side, you do need to be careful because just because an element or area of a river is passable today does not mean that it will be passable tomorrow. So you want to be careful in isolating yourself, like say going out to an island, um, because just because you can get to the island by foot today does not mean you can get off the island by foot tomorrow. So that is one element that you need to watch out for and be careful, or not necessarily be careful, but just be cautious of, just knowing that that's a thing and that it can fluctuate day by day. So do keep these things in mind and do as well when you are crossing rivers, never feel like you have to cross the river. If it's getting too risky, if it's getting too um, deep for you or the current starting to drag you or whatnot, keep your limitations in mind and feel or don't try and necessarily push yourself across the river unless you really know you can make it because once again, rivers are one of those things that you want to be very careful with because if you aren't, they can either kill you or soak all your gear in an instant. It does not take long for a survival situation to go from bad to worse when it, you're talking about water. So just keep these important elements in mind and Hopefully this has been a little bit of an insight video with some fun tips. And as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.